In this video, I'm going to show you how you can calculate the wavelength or frequency of radiation needed to break a chemical bond. Now, this is looking at CFCs in the context of their ozone depletion potential. So it's useful to know how strong bonds are, not in terms of their average bond enthalpy, but in terms of the frequency of radiation, or in this case, it's after the wavelengths of radiation needed to break a bond. So CFCs are molecules that are chemically very stable, which is part of their problem because they aren't broken down in the troposphere. They rise up into the stratosphere where very high energy UV light causes bonds to break homolytically, which means that our bonds break and radicals are formed because we end up with two species, both of which have an unpaired electron. And these radicals can go on to catalyze the destruction of ozone. So in this particular question, we're asked to calculate the minimum uh, wavelength of radiation in nanometers needed to break a carbon fluorine bond. And we're given the average bond enthalpy. So where do we start? The first thing to appreciate is that average bond enthalpies are in kilojoules per mole. So that's the amount of energy it takes to break a mole of carbon fluorine bonds. Um, but I'm asked to find the minimum wavelength of radiation to break a single carbon fluorine bond. So the first thing I need to know is how much energy does it take to break a single carbon fluorine bond? So I am going to divide. 485 by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So Avogadro's number tells us the number of things, in this case bonds, in a mole. And it would be on your data sheet. This is a good example of the type of A-level question where you really need to plunder your knowledge from across the uh, syllabus or the curriculum in order to solve a problem. So when I plug that into my calculator, it tells me that the answer is 8.06 times 10 to the minus 22 kilojoules. And that is uh, the amount of energy it takes to, can't write straight, to break a single carbon fluorine bond. Now, if I know the amount of energy it takes to break a single bond, I can calculate the frequency of radiation needed to break that bond because we all know that E equals HV. Where V equals the frequency, E is the energy, and that is in joules, because H is Planck's constant. And again, this would be on your data sheet, and that is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So in the first step, we calculated the strength of the carbon fluorine bond in kilojoules. So I need to multiply that by a thousand to turn it into joules. And then I need to rearrange my equation. So frequency is going to equal the energy and that is in joules, not kilojoules, divided by Planck's constant. So that is going to be 8.06 times 10 to the minus 19, divided by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. And that gives me 1.22 times 10 to the 15 hertz. So frequency is in hertz. Why have I calculated the frequency? Because if I know the frequency, I can work out the wavelength. So frequency and wavelength are related via the speed of light. So speed of light equals wavelength times frequency. So C is speed of light. Again, this would be either in the question or on your data sheet. And that's 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we know the frequency. So we can rearrange to find the wavelength. So wavelength 
equals speed of light divided by frequency, 3.0 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.22 times 10 to the 15. And when we do that, let me just pull that back, we are going to have a value of 2.26 times 10 to the minus 7. Now at this point my units are in meters because the speed of light was given in meters per second. Now you are expected to know that 1 nanometer equals 10 to the minus 9 meters. So if I want my answer in nanometers I'm going to have to multiply by 10 to the power of 9. And when I do that, it comes out at 246 nanometers. So the key here is to think logically and to have these equations in your head. Invariably, these questions involve using Avogadro's number at some point, either to scale up to a mole or to bring us back down to a single bond. E equals HV is a very useful equation. We use that a lot. Be very clear, though, that you understand how all the units relate to each other, because that's where most people make their mistakes. And then, of course, the equation C equals wavelength times frequency uh, is the one that people often forget, because, hey, this is supposed to be chemistry, not physics. But once again, be very clear that we understand how all the units convert. And finally, always quote your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. Well, our original bond enthalpy was given to three significant figures, so my final wavelength is also to three significant figures. Don't expect exam questions to ask you to do that. Nowadays, they expect you to make that leap all by yourself. If this has been useful, hit the subscribe button, the effortless way to support your studies. And by clicking the link in the blurb below, it will take you straight to the Crunch Chemistry School, where you'll find all the resources you need to get that A-star grade at A-level. Together we can do this.